Well, good morning and welcome to the Morning Meditation with God radio ministry brought to you each morning at this same time by the generous and loving members and friends of the Midwest Church of Christ. The Midwest Church of Christ is located at 2115 Garland Avenue here in Louisville, Kentucky. And we'd like to extend to you and to your entire family a um, warm and loving invitation to come and be with us um, here at the Midwest Church of Christ. Again, located at 2115 Garland Avenue here in Louisville, Kentucky. Our order of services include each Sunday morning at 8.30 a.m. is our first worship of the day. Then at 9.30 we have our Sunday Bible School. And at 10.30, we have our second worship of the day. On Wednesday, we have our midweek Bible study, prayer and devotional services. Our first session is at 10 a.m. in the morning. Uh, and our evening session is at 6.50 that's 10 minutes before 7. If you, if, if you would like to study the Bible. In the comforts of your own home, we have two ways that you can do this. One is the Bible correspondence course that you can take by mail. The second is the personal home study where someone will come and sit down with you, study the Word of God right in the comforts of your own home. Either way, you give us a call at 774-3986, and we'll register you today. Um, and other announcements. I'm, I want to apologize as to what went on yesterday. Um, it was uh, um, a surprise uh, that I, uh, we had, we had the, um, we had the program to, um, spin out um, as occasionally it does, uh, but when it, evidently when it came back, uh, it did not connect to the regular in internet or to the site to which we uh, were given. So uh, we had two other people that I that have never been with us before join us, and maybe that's a good thing. I'm not sure, but uh, some most of you. Uh, we did not see you, um, uh, and according to my dear uh, friend and sister, uh, uh, Rita Kramishi, she said uh, uh, they couldn't find us. So I um, thought something had happened again, but no, I was fine. I, I was doing the program, but um, now the radio, uh, radio people heard, um, but... But this morning, um, we um, are having difficulty. Uh, the station has not um, uh, they've had some technical problems there at the station, uh, but everything is uh, everything is fine now. We'll just um, get on about the business. They, you know, the snow will, will do things. Um, with the lines, the and so we we know that uh, the snow, snowstorm could have had some something to do with it, and we give thanks to God uh, for it. So, um, other announcements: the ladies enrichment classes will will uh, will has been postponed to this coming Sunday. Um, and uh, following the second, uh, the second worship, um, and we hope that uh, uh, all of our sisters, younger, older, in between, uh, make sure that you're there uh, for um, for that. So, the, for the ladies' enrichment classes, and uh, we know that will be. A blessing uh, to us. The Vision Day. 
uh, youth, high school and college, and uh, are invited to a Vision Day Saturday, February the 20th from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Guided discussions on how to make informed decisions about your academic career future. Special guest speakers and a live show uh, case of historical black colleges and universities will be on the agenda. So we hope that all of you uh, will make plans to have your young people out this Saturday, the 20th, at 11 a.m. The Black History Program is set for Saturday, uh, February the 27th, 6.30 p.m. Uh, is designed to recognize the achievement uh, and contributions by the African Americans uh, in this country. Come uh, and make sure... Uh, it will be virtual, and uh, we hope that you will tune in. If you have something you would like to contribute, please see Brother John Poo Malone or Sister Lydia Malone. Praise God. Um, also on uh, that weekend, uh, on that Saturday the 27th, um, they... Uh, uh, Pastor Jerry L. Stevenson will receive an honorary doctorate degree from the Victory Bible Training College. Um, amen. Uh, we're just a, a, excited about that. And uh, uh, we thank God that uh, uh, people think that I'm worthy of... Um, of this, and uh, I, I humbly accept um, uh, this, and 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 I'm pleased and thankful for uh, Pastor Derek Anders, uh, uh, Derek Derek Wilson, uh, and uh, for and the the board of the school uh, considering me for this uh, um, privilege. Also, that uh, on that weekend the. Annual Minister's Appreciation will be on Sunday to, uh, in recognition to 36, 37 years. Um, we are pausing to say thank you um, uh, to Brother Stevenson. So uh, there are many that are contributing and we're just praying to God that um, we will be moving forward in this, in this day. Uh, coming up soon uh, in Sunday Bible school classes will resume in March. Uh, see, uh, at 9.30, I told Brother Burns the, the other day, I said, well, Brother Burns, now you can see they're going to be meeting at 9.30. So when we, uh, our preaching can't go to 9.35. <laughs> and Brother Burns said, why are you talking to me? Amen. Well, y'all talk about me going long, so I just throw it out once in a while. Praise be unto God. If you're in need of food, um, uh, we will be uh, having our uh, community distribution on the 25th, and uh, you spend your, you pay your bills, and uh, we will assist you with your food uh, necessities to help you with your budgets. Praise be unto God. Now let's remember our sick and shut-in. I want to remember Sister Jacqueline Holman, Sister Clarice Floyd Johnson, Sister Emma Johnson, Sister Eliza Jordan, Sister Don Marie Sizemore. Pray also for Brother Robert Jordan, and Brother Angelo Pentegrast. Pray also for our shut-in, Sister Louise Covington, Sister Sarah Cowan, Sister Mary Hunter, Sister Savannah Johnson, Sister Opal Pace, Sister Pearl Smith, and Sister Mary Wood. Pray also for Brother James Frazier 
And please keep Sister Bertha Frazier in your prayer for her health as she waits on her husband. Remember those that are going through dialysis and radiation, chemotherapy and other treatments. Pray for them and help God, ask God to deliver and show their, his kindness to them. Praise be unto God. Now let's, let's go to God in prayer. Our Father which art in heaven, as we come before you today, we're mindful, O oh God, how gracious you are. Lord, we thank you, and oh, how we praise you. Give us this day, Lord, our daily bread. And Lord, please forgive us of our debts, those knowing and unknown. We pray, O oh God, for your mercy. But then we ask you, put, put, your, put your spirit of mercy in us, that we'll learn how to show mercy even to those that, that do not want our mercy. Help us to be like Jesus. Now, oh God, as we face our enemies today, we, get, we ask that you put a spirit of, around our table that we will eat and, and show thanks to the God of heaven and, and may our enemies, may they see our, what we do and start turning towards you. Lord, oh Lord only, only you know. You know, God. And so I, I come to you and I praise your name. Thank you for those that are listening and was watching this morning. Be with them in their homes. Be with them in all that they're doing. And Lord, I pray. I pray for them. I thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus, amen. Now, let's open up your Bibles to the book of Psalms, the first division. The Bible, the Word of God says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the council of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sins, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and it is in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Jesus come to show us how to live in this new kingdom of God. Matthew records him teaching his disciples in the mountain. In Matthew chapter 5, beginning at verse number 3, the Bible, the word of God says, Blessed are the poor in spirit. Theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. And blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. And blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall seek God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake. Theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you, and they shall say all manner of evil against you falsely. For my sake rejoice. 
Rejoice, he says, rejoice and be exceedingly glad for great is your reward in heaven for so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. And now let us open up your Bibles to the book of Matthew, the 16th chapter. And uh, verse 24. The Bible, the Word of God says, Then Jesus said to his disciples, If anyone wants to come with me, he must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. Tuesday, February the 16th, 2021, our daily devotion entitled, Deny Yourself. Sin causes us to be self-centered. Shifting our hearts from God to self. The essence of salvation is about face from self-centeredness to God-centeredness. The Christian must spend a lifetime denying self. Our great temptation will be to affirm ourselves while we follow Jesus. James and John did this when they chose to follow Jesus, but answered for the two most prominent positions in Jesus' kingdom. They said, they said, and James and John, the sons of Zebedee, approached him and said to him, Teacher, we sure you, we sure we desire you to do for do for us whatever we asked of you. And he replied to them, What do you desire me to do for you? And they said, And they said to him, Grant that we may sit one on your right hand and the other on your left hand in your glory, your majesty and splendor. Well, they didn't ask for too much, did they? James and John wanted discipleship that would impede their personal desires and aspirations. Like them, we say, Lord, I want to be pleasing to you, but I want to stay where I am. Self-centeredness. Self-centered people try to keep their lives unruffled and undisturbed. They, they want to keep their life safe and secure. Our temptation is to give, to give our time and effort to the goals of the world. Then, when we are successful in the, eye, in the world's eyes, we seek to bring God into our world by honoring him with our success. We may say now that I have succeeded in business or sports or politics or with my family or even the Christian ministry. I want to give God the glory for it. God is not interested in receiving second-handed glory for and for the activity that we have given him. God receives glory from his activity through our lives. 
The world will entice you. The world will entice you, my brothers, to adopt its goals and invest in temporal things. But here's what we've got to do. We've got to resist the temptation to pursue our own goals, asking God to bless them. Rather, deny yourself and join the activity of God as He reveals it to you. I'm going to I'm, I'm going to use this again. I've got, I've got to go to God and repent and confess that the goals, I set some goals in my life as a young 26-year-old. I set goals, and, and five goals I set. And I put them before God. And I want you to know one thing. I, every one that I put before God at 26 years of age, God fulfilled those goals. And I've been saying that there's still two left. And, and I'm sure God is going to do it. But I'm going to call upon God to let me repent to Him and ask Him for forgiveness if the last two goals are not what he has in store for me, that I will turn it over to him. I turn it all over to him. I, I give it up and let him do what he chooses to do in my life. My brothers and sisters, as I say to you uh, on many occasions, when I'm preaching, before I preach to you, I've already have had my own dose of God's word, and it stings sometimes. It stings sometimes. And, and so today, so today, I, I give over to God. Whatever he, whatever he chooses to do, I'm all right with it. Because he's been a mighty good God to me in my life. Praise be unto God. And so is the readings from the books of the Lord. The book of Psalms, the first degree division. The book of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 3 to 12. And here... In the book of Matthew, chapter uh, uh, 24, chapter 16, and the verse is 24. Now let's go to our featured study. Found in the book, found in the book of um, uh, Second Samuel. I had turned my uh, the twenty fourth chapter, Second Samuel the twenty fourth chapter. Turn your attention there. There, when we get down here now to the twenty sixth chapter. We are finding that God is dealing with David's last years. Some of the last things that David is going to be addressing in his life. He is setting down with the people of God. And he is saying to them, that God is. And he is sharing with them now the victory. I, Chapter 23 addressed with us the not only did David accomplish a great deal, but David accomplished a great deal because he had 
some faithful men of God with him. And I shared with you, uh, with the preachers and, and uh, elders uh, in the house of God, don't ever forget, don't ever forget, you can't do this job, this awesome job that you have, you can't do it without the help of others that God placed within you. When God gave Moses the great task of building the tabernacle, he showed him in heaven what needed to be done. And he came and showed him and gave him the ear, the details. And Moses said to God, this is a mighty good plan. But how am I to do this? How am I to do this? And who is to help do this? God said, I've already, I've already contacted. I've already put in Aaron. I put in the men with the talent of carpentry. I, I put into the hands of masonry. I put into the hand seamstress. I put in everything. I put into the hearts of every man. And you tell them when you need them. And they'll be there for you. So my brothers and sisters. It is, it is, a, it is a right thing for us to do. Is to understand that. God would never ask you to do anything that he hasn't already prepared you to be able to do it. And that is, that is what we must do, my brothers. And I'll call you right back there, Brother Vince. Yes, and, uh, well, y'all give me a break here. Um, technical difficulties with the station, <clears throat> with the radio station is, is complete and, um, and we we are back on the air now. Uh, we'll we'll be on the air on the radio. Uh, be on the air on the radio in just a moment here. But anyway, when we look at chapter twenty three, God shows us. God gives to us the great work that David had done and uh, we we must uh, we must be thankful uh, to God uh, uh, for that uh, that God uh, God helped him uh, by providing him with soldiers then something is coming up the uh, busy signal so it must not be on on the uh, so I'll call back. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, so what we, we, as we go into chapter 24, God has another task. God has another task for King David. Had another task for him. And it's that task that uh, we we are in right now. So uh, the Bible, beginning at verse one, uh, in 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 verse one, it says, "And again, the anger of uh, the Lord was kindled against Israel, and He moved against David." Uh, and he moved David against them, saying, Go, number Israel and Judah. For the king said to Joab, the captain, the captain of the host who was with him, Go now through all the tribes of Israel, from Dan even to Beersheba, and count the people that I may know their number. And Joab said to the king, May the Lord your God add a number times as many as there are, and let 
The eyes of my Lord, the king, see it. But why does my Lord, the king, delight in this thing? But, jo but the king's word prevailed against Joab and the commanders of the army. So they went from the king's presence to number the Israelites. Sin and judgment are unpleasant subjects to discuss. For when they are pictured in our minds, the image is dismal. Nevertheless, both are realities in life. Wickedness does not permeate all of society through terrible deeds of immorality and lawlessness and violence. And the, catast and the catastrophic results are seen in, uh, uh, in uh, mangled bodies, broken relationships, Disturbed emotions, lonely hearts, depressed spirits, and de depre depressed minds destroy. We it, it is revealed through destroyed uh, uh, poverty and ruined lives throughout communities. You see, when when sin and its judgment, it it is not pleasant, but it doesn't always come in the ugly form. But note this. The eternal consequences of sin far exceed the crises and hardships we, we bring upon ourselves in this life. The consequences of sin will force us to face God in the great day of judgment. And if there's anything I'd like for all of us to understand, I know that wickedness can hurt us. I know that uh, immorality can kill us. But I'm here to tell you there is one greater judgment that man needs to always be concerned about. And that is that judgment day that we have to stand before the living God. And to give an account of what we have done in this body, whether or not it's been good or it's been evil. Yes, the consequences of sin will force us to, to, to face God in that great day of judgment. But the wonderful news is there is deliverance from our sin and from the judgment that is to come. <laughs> it is, a, amen, it is a great deliverance. Can you imagine you standing before the living God and you're standing before him, not in your goodness, but in the goodness of the Lord Jesus. We humbly hide ourselves, hide ourselves under the cross and the feet of Jesus, realizing that, it's all, that, that his mercy is what's going to save us in this new day. Israel had sinned against God. And uh, it was with this, with this sin with this sin David was aroused to take a census of the army. Aroused by the Lord because of the Lord's anger against Israel. 
and the need to chastise his people. God allowed Satan to tempt David to take a military census, a census that was motivated by pride in the empire he had built. And in the military, he could now trust to protect the nation. Note that scripture says, the Lord's anger burned against Israel because of some evil they had committed. But the wicked event is not described. Another scripture says that God allowed Satan to tempt David to take the senses. In second and second in first chronicles chapter twenty one and verse one it says Satan an adversary stood up against Israel and stirred up David to number Israel. My brothers and sisters uh, <laughs> Satan that Satan's main job is to tempt you as a child of God to do something that you know God hadn't asked you to do. Yes. So the Lord, the, the, the Lord's anger was kindled against him and he moved David against them saying, go number the people. A false pride. David had inside of him a false pride and a false trust in the military uh, 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 that had arose in his heart, tempting David to honor himself and the power of the army instead of the Lord who had really given him the triumphant victories over the surrounding nation. All the honor belonged to the Lord and his power of deliverance, not to David and the power of his military. By allowing David to be tempted by Satan, the Lord was to reach David and, uh, amen, was to teach David an important lesson that he was totally dependent upon the Lord and must walk humbly, casting himself, uh, upon the Lord and his power, not upon the power of his military, not on the power of, uh, of the numbers of, of people. God wanted David to understand. David, your power is of, amen. Somebody ought to say amen. Because let me tell you what God's trying to teach you, teach you and me. It, it is not about how many degrees you have. And oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Now let me. Let, it's not. It's not how how many people you have working for you. How big your bank account has become. How many. How many plaques and and trophies are all upon you. You know. Amen. Uh, Paul says, "I am what I am by the grace of God." I. He says, "I I have given up everything that I may know Him." And the power of his, might, of his might, I come to tell you. He says, <laughs> For the king said to Joab, in verse number two, The king said to Joab, the, the captain of the host that was with him, Go, go now through all the tribes of Israel. through all the tribes of Israel, from Dan even to Beersheba, and count the people that I may know their number. Listen to him. Listen to him. That I may know the number. Is it, is it important? David, is it important for you to know? Or is it important for you to trust God that whatever you need, he, had, he can provide? Joab said to the king, May the Lord your God 
add a number times as many people as there are. And let the eyes of the Lord, uh, the king, see it. But why? Why does my Lord the king delight in this thing? You know, in verse 2, David summoned the military commanders and ordered them to go throughout the tribes of Israel and take a census of all fighting men. His heart was filled with a spirit of pride in the huge army and massive empire he had built. And now he was trusting the military instead of trusting the Lord. My brothers and sisters, don't ever get, don't ever get yourself trusting in what you have. Some people, they trust in their retirement programs. May I say to you, it's a good thing to have one, but don't trust in it. They can't support the church, the work of the church. They put more into their retirement programs on a monthly basis than they put in to the house of God, into the treasury of the house of God. Saying God didn't tell us that we're to give 10%. 10% that's under the old law. Well, let me be clear with you. A tithe was, was given prior to the Ten Commandments. Abraham gave a tenth, a tithe of everything he had uh, to Melchizedek, king of Salem. <laughs> Amen. After he had a victory and taken the spoils, he gave a tenth. Of everything. I know God is able. Trust in Him. And it's okay to plan for your future. But plan for your eternity. That's what you need to plan for. I'm going to say that again. It's a good thing to plan for your future. But it is a greater thing to plan for your future. Uh, amen. For your eternity. It's cause it's eternity. Everything today is marching towards eternity. Children of God. Understand this. We spend a lot of time. Money. Looking for uh, building our, our future. But we spend very little. Spending for our eternity. That is a dangerous Way to live. Oh my 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 my. We 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 we're going. We have to come back here tomorrow. We have to come back here tomorrow. There's some good stuff in here, and we'll we'll complete this tomorrow. Praise be unto God. Let's open up the prayer lines. Uh, Sister uh, Tanya Lee, good to have you with us today, baby. Um, uh, we want to, want to, Jim Winter, all right, Jim Winter, all righty. Uh, Sister Lee has asked us to pray for her and her husband uh, who were hit by two drunk drivers. Oh, my, oh, my goodness. Pray, praying for you, honey. God is. We are uh, saddened that um, uh, for Sister Phaedra um, Floyd Smith um, and her husband, Tashambi, they lost their baby, the fight of the little Ezekiel. Uh, he stayed two weeks when the doctors had given up on him. Uh, he, uh, he, uh, he, he stayed two whole weeks and um, had the whole hospital rooting for him. Uh, praise be unto God. And 
we are so thankful that uh, our God has has blessed him uh, and, and taken him on into his care. And uh, we're we're so thankful. Uh, we want to pray for they will have a funeral service for him this Friday. Um, we'll have a viewing of the body uh, starting at 10 uh, and then the funeral right at 12. Um, and uh, we it will be here at the Midwest Church of Christ. Um, we will again um, have to say to everyone, we have to maintain maintain the um, distancing, uh, the wearing of masks. All of this is is still mandatory, um, and so we want to keep them in our prayers. Sister Rita and Brother David Kramishi says, "Oh my, may God bless you and your and your husband with a rapid and complete healing." and restoration. Speaking of the leaves, God bless you all. Amen. May God give them that healing. Amen. And Sister Honda Sharp has said, pray for the families with no power or heat. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Let's pray for them. We've got to, we've got to, we've got to pray that people, uh, and whatever, whatever we we as individuals, and and as a congregation, we need to be concerned about people uh, living in in unheated homes and where it, it life. God's been good to us, children, and we need to do with Him what we need to for Him, uh, as God gives us the ability. Um, May, may he bless us to be a blessing to others. 571-1240. If you would like to give us a call, you can call us and let us know that the Lord is God and there is none besides him in all the world. And Praise be unto the God. One of the things that we've got to be conscious of, that even as God blesses us, that we don't ever sit down and talk about, oh, look at what I've done. Man, man, let's be, let's be clear. I'll, I sometimes tell people um, that what God did for with me for 20 plus years uh, in the uh, nonprofit uh, uh, business world, uh, I I was quick to always let everybody know that we arrived at where we are because of the grace of God. And children, I am clear. That whatever we do, the good that we've done here at Midwest, what we're going to do, all glory goes to God. All glory goes to God. We honor those in our past who have done good and, and led us down the right path. But even they will tell you it is the Lord's doing. That's what we we are always keep in mind. God was good to David. He was with David when he was a little young boy out there shepherding his father's sheep and, uh, uh, and, and herds. But God, God gave him strength when a lion and a bear come and took God. Uh, Amen. Uh, he, he grabbed them by the tails and he smacked them upside the head. Don't take my sheep. <laughs> Sister Linda Bird says, continue to pray for me. Thanking God for healing from the virus. 
Praise be unto God, Sister Linda. Amen, Sister. It was God's goodness, God's great mercy. And all of us, all of us, if we got up this morning, we didn't get up this morning because we were good. We got up this morning because of God's mercy. His mercy to us are brand new every morning. Every morning. And we need to give him praise because God is able. The God of heaven is able to do what no one else can do in our lives. We want to pray for all of our sick and shut-in, those going through dialysis, those needing a homeless, those needing food and shelter. May God move us to help in his way and in his name. Bow with me. Our Father, thank you for blessing us with your mercy. Thank you for the good that you've done. Oh Lord, there is none besides you. I bring before you Sister Tanya Lee and I ask that you would be with her and Brother Lee as they as they are recovering uh, from this this accident. Healing let it be theirs. Pray for the commissions, the love that they show to so many. I pray, oh God, for Sister Sharp, and I pray for her family. And I pray uh, that you'll be with the, those that are in need of food and shelter. Uh, Lord, I pray and I thank you for healing Sister Linda uh, Bird. May you be there, her guide to safety for others now, knowing that the power of God can still heal in this generation. Go with us, O God. And I thank you in the name of Jesus. Amen. My time is up for today. Enjoyed being with you. And I do look forward to being with you again on tomorrow. Until then, know this. Our God loves you. And so do I.